just wanna be okay How can I pick up the pieces When everything breaks with every day I'm getting older, I feel the weight Up on my shoulders, I'm strong enough I will rise above, it's all gonna be okay If I can be anything, I think I'm gonna be me Wednesday. Hello, everybody. Keely Don't FH Umpires. Good to see you all. And when I say see you all, meaning I'm seeing you through a piece of glass in my imagination. I am very glad to be here. We have wrapped up the World Cup, and that is going to be the main focus of what we talk about, or actually our main obsession, really, of what we talk about today. So I'm looking forward to all of that. And yes, my timer was not in place because I don't know if you remember last week, my scene blew up and that's why I was a little bit late getting on. I was like, oh, wait a minute. Remember that time that the scene blew up and I had to pull the overlays back on, but I forgot to recreate the timer. So anyway, whatever we're here. And that's the most important thing saying hi to everybody already in the chat. It was really good to see you. We do have a new friend in the house, Stephen Hunter. Good to have you on for the first time. Live. Yeah. DJ Airhorn. I bring the class and the style. That's that's the way I roll. And let's see. Marcos, haven't seen you for a hot minute. Hola. Como estas? I hope you're well. And Reg, Reg is here. Reju is here. And Paul. Whoa. Another first timer. Hi. I love this. I love it when people are willing to come up and say, yeah, it's my first time live. And then I get to blow obnoxious sounds. Pull up noxious sounds, sound them, whatever. There you go. <laughs> is it clear what up in the house? Yeah, there you go. Good to see you, Nick. And Peter is here. That is awesome. <laughs> you just, are you just guessing now? Are you just, just trying to throw out every possible permutation of the consonants and hope that the vowels sort of sort themselves out? That's fine. I'm, I'm here. I'm here for that. Uh, <laughs> here we go. This is what we're talking about today. Dangerous shots on goal. Hopefully this is all coming through okay. My computer's doing weird stuff. Um, player management. No, this is last week's. This is last week's and everything blew up. So hang on. No, nope. I don't accept this. I don't accept this. I will not. I will not accept this. Everything is a little bit off kilter today. See what I mean? This is, this is where we're supposed to be. 
So, okay, I'm, no, no, I, I refuse. No, I give in. Okay, we're going to talk about, <laughs> I'm going to look at my notes. Um, we're going to talk about deliberately playing the ball with the body after we talk about sliding players, because Sebastian was really upset that we didn't get to sliding players last week. So we're going to do a bunch of stuff on sliding players, deliberately playing with the body, moving your feet on the penalty stroke, goalkeepers. We're going to talk about face masks. And then I'm going to wrap up with some overall trends that I spied over watching. I will admit there were three matches I did not watch on the final day. I didn't. I just didn't watch them. So I'm only at 41 of 44 possible matches. And I will watch the other ones at some point. I just had to get that guy's voice out of my head. It was very, very annoying. But there you go. Oh, Gary, you're back. It's good to have you. It's been a while. There you go. And yes, do the thing that the, the, the weird lady says down here. Join us on our Discord server, fhumpires.com forward slash DS. That's where we hang out and build our community and talk about umpiring in a constructive and fun way. And sometimes there are many gifts involved. Just sometimes. Mike, you're driving, okay? Mike, stop. You are driving. Just put the phone down, okay? We, I promised, I promised you in the pre-show that we were going to talk about you while we were here. So we will. Just don't, just like a desperate Aussie was a <laughs> Oh my goodness. There you go. Everything's broken. Yep. Blame Hamish. Continue. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Hamish, I know you're pretending you're not here, but I am blaming everything on you. And your ears are probably burning. And you're like, oh, wait a minute. I'm, I must be missing Keely giving me grief. Hi, Jared. Good to see you. It's been a while to see you as well. Thanks for being there. You'll stick to hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep it simple, right? Keep it simple. All right. Let's get down to business. Hopefully this will work. Sliding players. This is what we're going with. There are sound effects that aren't sounding. I, oh, man. So this was the first play that I pulled out. And I wanted to do so because we do talk about players sliding sometimes in a very black and white context. And I have spoken on many occasions about how we need to be very, very clear that we are meeting all of the criterion that need to exist in order for the automatic 10 minute yellow card to apply. So the poll question here is what would you do in this situation? Do you believe there is a foul here? Would you call a free hit defense? Would you, or sorry, free hit attack? Would you give a free hit and a card? Would you allow this to play on or with advantage and, and not do anything about it? Or would you play on the advantage and then have a, have a bit of a, have a bit of a word, throw some side eye, give a little what for <laughs> to this, to the player who has made this sliding slash diving tackle. So I'd love to hear from you. And, and then I'll tell you what the right answer is. I'm just kidding. Actually, I'm not really kidding. Should you ban Mike? I don't know. Like it's probably for the greater good in so many ways. But there you go. Taco, it has been forever. I'm glad you're here. Thank you. It, this is great. It's like a reunion show. It's like y'all are... Okay, if she's going to wrap up the, the World Cup, now I'm going to come. I'm going to make my grand return. I'm going to announce. I'm going to get showered with affection and love. And then I'm never going to leave. That's what I'm hoping you're all going to say. Undisclosed amount of time, yellow card. Uh, minimum five hours. <laughs> there we go. Hi, Graham. Glad you're here. Okay, so if the poll is up, that means that I don't have my Chrome window open, obviously. So I need to switch to this and really Google right now, Google wants me to ver verify my existence. Um, it's very much me, you jerks. And if you don't know, oh. 
I'm literally live streaming on your platform. You jerk faces. Okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go ahead and do this because unlike an Aussie referral, I can't. Oh no, I have to sign as this person. I've got like four Google accounts. And now I have to open my phone. To help keep your account safe, Keely, is this really you? Is this really you? Yeah, it's really me. I have to wait for a verification. Uh, yes, it really is me. I have to say for the 14th time. And then I have to give them their two-digit number. And now they're going to let me into my own damn live stream. <laughs> Not today, Satan. Not today. That's what I'm going to say. Oh, and I just realized. I do like a bit of of empty space in a stream. I, I think there's some dramatic tension that gets built there, but I do like the little soft music in the background just to, just so people know that I haven't muted my microphone because as we know, I want to do that. So now y'all voted. I'll go through it really quickly. What I see here is that on this play, it, it, this one was really interesting to me because I remember back um, and I've told this story several times, and I think it was the World Cup in 2018. And Manpreet went for a dive and, and was sliding towards the ball in the same direction, almost the same direction as I believe it was Lucas Villa of Argentina. Ben Gunchen was umpiring. And I'll, I'll say, say hi uh, about Ben later. And Manpreet sliding and Via's dribbling and Via can see that Manpreet is coming and he ends up getting taken down just outside the 23 and Ben shoot yell card 10 minutes off you go and a couple of top players were on Twitter saying dude can get around that and I I, I found that to be an like an a, an interesting way of approaching it that there's an onus on the ball carrier to have to hurdle a player who is deciding to go to ground, who won't be in control of their body, who is taking a high risk of doing so. And now suddenly the ball carrier who kind of has other stuff to do in their lives, you know, they're trying to figure out where to pass, where to dribble, who they're going to be setting up for the shot you know, how, how they're going to shape the space, communication, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, maybe not like kick the ball away off their own stick. Okay. That's just me. But, and I thought, it, it, do we really put that onus on the attacker to keep themselves safe? And I don't believe we do. If that Malaysian player had been brought down by this challenge, then I would have fully expected it to be a 10 minute yellow card. And I wouldn't expect the Malaysian to do this amazing thing where he hurdles over like Superman and just keeps, keeps himself on the, on the road. That being said, you can't penalize what hasn't happened. And remember, we need a ball carrier to be you need to make contact with that ball carrier, which kind of doesn't happen, that brings that ball carrier to ground. I'm missing a step. Ball carrier. It's gotta be, yeah, an intentional going to ground. Okay, yeah. Wow, brain fart. Um, and th that contact brings the player to ground. We don't really have contact. We don't have the player going to ground. So we can't, we can't penalize or even, I think in this case, I don't even think we can stop play to give that free hit defense so that, um, <laughs> and, and, and even admonish the player at that point. The only thing we can do, I think is to go back after the fact with a little bit of a, dang you lucky sort of admonishment and you know please don't pull that necessarily again so that's 
that's kind of where I see that, that play going. So I'm going to end the poll. This is going to be, oh, there's a red button above the poll that says end stream. I think they should change the location of that button. Okay. So what do we have here? Wait, wait, I'm, oh my gosh. I'm trying to do things differently today. Two minute warning. So what we had was, where's my thing? <clears throat> okay. 70% of you, 74% of you wanted play on plus a warning. Okay. And then 19% were just happy just to play that on. Okay. <laughs> P. Maybe I should have kept things more simple today. And somebody did want a free hat, a free hit attack and a card, a 6% of you. And I guess in that case, I would, I would ask you to look at in that particular scenario, what disadvantage that player suffered in that moment and what would have been the better result for the team. If you would stop that play, that, that Malaysian player was off and running. So you don't, you, you, you have to be reading and expecting, okay, how can this player make use of the space in front of them? What passing options do they have, et cetera, et cetera. What is the best option for them in this moment? And if you feel strongly that you're going to come back to a card for whatever reason, remember you can play on an advantage, arm up, yelling advantage. You can even say things, uh, you know, like I'm coming back to you, that sort of thing. And that can be the best combination of all worlds. There you go. What do y'all say? Uh, 40 seconds to go full attack on. Absolutely. Okay. So Peter, that's even a, a, a nicer way to pull in some more facts there to make sure that you're getting the best result for the team that had been fouled. You don't see an intent to slide attack on this one. It, it's the player in full control of their decision. <laughs> the player is in full c control of their decision to dive and to go to ground in that moment. Okay. And that's what we're talking about there is that they, they know. They know, and it's not like they tripped and fell. They just went out. And even though we can call it a sliding tackle or a diving tackle, does it matter if it's head first or feet first? I mean, it does, because if you're the slider, you're a lot safer if you go feet first, <laughs> but that's about it. Um, difference makes a dive like what happens here or a trip over their f own feet, but you need the replay. Yeah, no, he didn't trip over his own feet. He went full out trying to intercept that ball. There's no intent to slide into the tackle, but an awkward position to end up in. They do cause a disadvantage. Am I on drugs? Okay. Okay. I see, I see what you're all are saying here. And they're picking their chances. Good strength down the right hand side. Okay. I still see a little bit. I, I keep, I keep watching it. And now I'm, I am wavering, but the good news is it doesn't change what the call would be. <laughs> the good news is hi, I'm Abeno, Good to see you. And then Jamal without coaching the player, that was bad, unsuccessful. Have a quick seat to think about what you've done. I mean, I, yeah, I just, I see that they've, they've risked reaching to stretch out and, and going. Uh, I don't think the player has just slipped. So there you go. It looks like a trip play advantage, but no warning for Rachel. Okay. You did think he did intentionally go to ground, but had little impact on the play. Yes. <laughs> that was, that was the way I saw it before y'all threw doubts into my mind. And the attacker is not brought to ground. Absolutely. And that's, that's sort of one of the main things I want you to focus on. Sometimes I have seen umpires get a little bit mm, card happy when they see a player going to ground because they're like, oh, player went to ground. I'm going to card this. 
because I know I'm supposed to, but you need the other elements. You need the contact being made. You need that player being brought down in order to mandatory to be required to be giving a 10 minute yellow card in that situation. You could, you could give a 10 minute yellow card when all those factors don't exist, but it's not mandatory. And if you can't apply those factors and shape them properly to that situation, then you're in a little bit of trouble. Um, let's see, traffic lights, it sounds like carnage. There you go. <laughs> what sells you is not intentional as a stick ends up under him. Mm. Yes, and Mike about it while driving, okay? Uh, yeah, okay, and that's fair. And I think what's important is you guys are looking for, you're looking for things that give you more information as to whether this player is in control of their actions. And, you know, uh, Mike McDowell and I have gone through a little bit of a discussion on a play that we saw where a player did something kind of similar to that in the circle and did bring the player down. And we talked about, you know, what, what we saw as being the full extent of that recklessness and what things needed to be applied. So Mike, I'm interested, particularly in light of that scenario, what, you know, how, how that applies or how that's shaped by what you've got here. So now that I've really gotten off to a strong start, let's go to this next one. I'm way more sure about this. <laughs> so I'd like to know, in this case, what do you see here? Because there seems to be a lot of... Um, because it, 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 you know, the, the Dutch players certainly don't seem to understand why or what has happened here. So do you see a free hit defense, free hit and a green card? I can't remember what the poll options were that I gave you, but that's okay. That's why Kat is on board, on deck and ready to sort me out. And what did I say? Free hit defense, free hit defense and a green card. A five minute yellow card or a 10 minute yellow card. Those are the options. Okay, so when we look at this situation here, what we have is a player sliding, an attacker sliding to try to deflect the ball into the goal, and a defender chasing them or marking them at full pace. So I'd love to see what you have on this. There's definitely contact made. The player is definitely brought to ground. Purdy, you're never late as long as you're here. You struggled when this one was live as the Dutch player was down his need first and the Australian runs into him. It's reckless and clumsy low impact for Steven, but Q for the game, so likely have been something before yellow seems fair. Okay, I actually, I don't know what the card history in that game was, but I'd like you to take that out of that context. Like you, we don't have to couch in the context because this is something that if you consider it to be either high impact or you consider to be physical, reckless, and danger, dangerous, if you consider it to fulfill all of the criterion of a 10 minute yellow card in terms of a slide tackle, then it doesn't matter what's happened in the rest of the game. You're giving the 10 minute yellow card. Um, does it help that the ball is already out of play before the slide? Well, it's out of play before the impact. He's already sliding before the save is made. I want to have a have another look at this now. Y'all say interesting stuff that I don't pick up on, and this is why we talk about it. The 
Okay, for Raju, it's a 10 minute yellow because the player is being brought to ground. The ball had already left the pitch, so you would have thought a 23 meter restart instead of a free hit, but then gone to personal penalty for the impact going to take to ground. Andrew, is the sliding player ahead of the player he takes down? Is the trip inevitable or does the Australian player run into the sliding player? So this is one of the points that I want to tease out. Not because I'm saying, I, th I think in this, in this case it's really difficult. When we see it in slow motion, it makes it look much more like the Australian defender is running towards the Dutch player. Okay. But if we try to watch a little bit more carefully of how closely the Australian defender is marking, and I'll try to, in that moment, when you watch it in real speed, that happens very quickly. The Aussie player is very close to him. And the Dutch player makes that decision to go to ground. It would be really difficult at full pace for any defender to avoid this contact. But it's worth looking at because that's why I keep stressing that I don't like this interpretation of the briefing and I don't think it's constructive where we apply it to any slide. There's a distinction in the rules between what is a tackle and what is not. A tackle is defined as a player having possession of the ball and a member of the opposing team trying to dispossess that possession. And there's a reason for that definition because it creates a bunch of other, it creates a hockey reality of if I have the ball and I'm looking down, trying to look around, thinking of passing, thinking of playing, thinking of shooting, it's much more difficult for me to understand where a defender is and to keep track of them. Whereas if you don't have the ball and the ball is flying in from the other side and being saved by your goalkeeper and going off the end line, you have more control over, you have, you have more perception. You're able to take into account another player who might be going to ground. And if you run into that player, knowing full well and being able to perceive that and having the control of your own body, can you really say that the defender has caused that danger. Now in this situation, for me, well, I'll, I'll, I'll wait, I'll, I'll go through a few more comments and then I'll end the poll and then I'll try to tell you what I think. Um, but it's something that we need to be aware of, I think, because there is a risk that we get into a sports ball like situation where players are just running in for the sake of earning cards and earning fouls. And then they get up and they're, they're going like this, shaking their, their card hand and ain't nobody to got time for that. We don't have time to become sports ball. We don't want it. Taco thought the Dutch player was ahead, but now it seems more like he's next to the defender. It might be a clumsy slide that makes a defender trip, but cannot do anything to avoid. It's not a clumsy slide. It's an intentional, I'm going to ground because I'm going to try to slide and deflect this ball. Correct that right now, because that is not the way we're applying this. He goes down in an extended, I'm G, and whether he, he has to do so considering the safety of the players around him. Now, if that defender is further away from him and he's like, I'm pretty sure I can go down on the slide and things are going to be cool. This guy isn't going to run into me. That's different. Okay. But it's not a clumsy slide. It's a graceful execution of a ballet like maneuver that is potentially dangerous. And we ascribe that part of the responsibility onto that player who is sliding. Okay. Hope that's clear. So if they're full pace and the Dutch player just stops and the Australian smashes into him from behind, that's on the Australian player. Oh, you are devils advocating this one, McDowell. So why is it the Netherlands player's fault for the contact going to ground whilst moving away from a player into space? Uh, 
I think the distinction, and I, I, I mean, I, I want to give this good thought because it is a good point. It is rather Dumbledore's army about it, but it is a good point. Again, it's about what we expect players to do. And if a player is, let's say, let's, let's just switch this off for a sec so I can, I can focus. Players carrying the ball down the field and they're, they're just dribbling in a straight line and they have a chasing defender. It is reasonable, it is expected, it is part of the game that that player may suddenly change their direction to go off this way because there's somebody else who's coming up. Another defender is coming in front of him and he wants to avoid that player. He's getting ready to do a maneuver. He's trying to change his passing lanes. He's trying to, for example, what if he stops because he's holding up because he wants to give his teammate a chance to get into the far corner so he can aerial the ball into that corner but he has to pause for a second. Is he, is that an expected hockey play, an expected maneuver? Absolutely. Is a player who goes in for a slide and is carrying off, do we put that in the same category as things that are controlled, expected, etc.? No, we don't. We don't because they don't have control over the situation. They're not the ball carrier. They're not, and, and, and they're, they're, the ones, they're the ones taking that positive action and taking that intentional, yeah, that, that intentional maneuver. And then they don't have control anymore. I'm going to keep working on this thought. That was a work in progress. I'd give it maybe a four out of 10. I'm not super happy with it. The defensive work. Off goes Brinkman. <laughs> the slide had no effect as the ball left field to play. Then it is a player uh, doing a dangerous action. Alistair. You wouldn't expect the player to go to ground at that point. Contact in itself was dangerous and probably not relevant for this. Would have been a massive breakdown in play if the ball had not gone out. Well, it's not a breakdown in play, Alistair, because Australia didn't have possession of the ball. They're not the attackers here. Uh, so the Dutch player is just, they're not breaking down play. He's just doing something dangerous. Do, do you see the difference? We have to be... We have to pr use that phrase very precisely because it matters as to how we card actual breakdown play in situations where it's there. I don't want that to, get, to slip out of our control there. If the, def if the defender brings an attacker to ground off the ball in the 23, is P PC the correct option? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Graham, what would I do if a sliding player gets the touch, puts the ball in the goal, and then the same contact happens? Well, we've, we've gone through sliding attacker scenarios just like that. So there have been some in Pro League and in World Cups and things like that in, in previous shows. And often the decision turns on just how much contact was made, whether the defender was actually brought to ground, and how much, yeah, how much real danger was in that situation. But goals have been ruled out because of that. So, yeah, what would I do if I felt that the, it was a, if it was a dangerous slide, it brought somebody to ground and a goal was scored, then you blow a free hit and you give a 10 million yellow card. If I don't feel it was exceptionally dangerous because I feel like the defender, you know, had, had a chance or it wasn't high, high velocity, then maybe I could go with a five. But of course you would rule out the goal. It's re Peter, it's recklessness to safety of the other player. It takes an opponent to ground with a potential cause injury. You're taking them all. But the, the one thing it, it, we don't have, we, what, that we don't have the criterion, am I gonna have to get my all my chalk talk here? Am I gonna have to number them all for you? What we don't have is a player in possession of the ball. And I think that's a crucial 
distinction because this is not a slide tackle. This is a sliding attacker. Very different, very different. Should this still be a 10 minute yellow card because of the velocity, the danger and all that kind of stuff? Yes. Is this an automatic 10 minute yellow card because it ticks all the boxes? No, it doesn't tick all the boxes. It ticks two of the three boxes because it's not a tackle in my view and under the definition of the rules of hockey. And I think that that is a distinction worth making. Mm, I, okay, I see what you're saying, Taco, but I'm, I'm still... As a defender, you would expect an attacker potentially a slide for deflection if they were moving towards the goal. Mm, okay, I'll accept it and I'll think about it. Attacker moving into space should expect the defender to follow, especially in front of goal, has the duty to be safe going off his feet. Yeah. When he's marking that tight, if you can't see the defender, if you think you're free, free and clear, it gets a little, a little harder, right? Steven, you can expect an attacker to slide in this situation. You think the attacker was ahead of the defender, goes straight, goes in a straight line. The defender comes across to get in front when the player is on the ground. Twenty-three meter restart, Steven. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't agree with this perception of this, but absolutely, we'll see you soon. Okay, let's end this poll. No, not to end the stream. No, Keely, press the correct button. Two minute warning. There's supposed to be a box in this scene and it doesn't. What do we got? So for the, for the yellow card, we had 46% there for the 10. Okay. And then a yellow card five minute was 34% of you. So, um, yeah, that's a, that's a big, a big majority. And I think that's probably, I think that is the best decision. And I mean, at the, at the time, I mean, my first thing is when, oh, there. When I first saw it, I'm always a little bit, oh, it's a sliding attacker, you know, do we have to? And then when I see the impact, I see the velocity, I see how close the Australian defender is. I don't think he's running. It, there's no way he can't not be brought down by that sliding attacker, I believe. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, 10 minute yellow card, that's fine. Okay, so that's basically my thought processor. Let's just say, um, Purdy, if the player had slid in a straight line with a stick clearly towards the ball, you think Steven's point would be fair, but you can see him try to stop mid slide feet forward and run and turn towards the defender. Yeah. Which, you know, makes it more dangerous. Okay. That's, that's fair. Purdy. I see that. Okay. You're thinking about the hypothetical situation, the ball would remain in play, but then Netherlands would still have possession, but Netherlands can't break down their own play. They can commit dangerous actions, but they can't commit a foul against the opposition with the purpose, the, the recklessness as to whether that's going to stop the other team from doing something awesome with the ball they have. Okay. That is not breakdown play. Alistair, let me put it to you another way. Another mistake umpires would make back in the day when we had sticks going above the shoulder and that was illegal to contact the ball. You could not play the ball above your shoulder with your stick and a ball would be in play in the circle. It would rebound high off the goalkeeper and an attacker would put their stick high and they would bat it in and there's nobody around them and an umpire would card. That's incorrect. There is no breakdown of the play there. They've broken down their own play. They haven't broken down the opposition. They've given away, <laughs> they've given up a free hit instead of being able to possibly score a goal if they had just let the ball fall to their shoulder height. Okay, do you see the difference now? And that is very important. I'm just making faces now because hopefully that convinces people. Apparently people are decide on emotions and not rationality. So there's my emotion. I don't know what emotion that was. 
Uh, McDowell, you can see it both ways, and Dan was in the best position to see the lines and the timing. Yes, and that's like the last sort of wrap up point. And I think that's a really good thing to, to point out. So thank you for that. Peter, you agree it's not a tackle, but it's still, albeit not mandatory. Yep, good. You're saying exactly what I, I have been saying, so that means you're right, Peter. Luke, for the game of the impact, a 10 minute yell is probably more appropriate, but you voted a five minute because you were uncertain. Yeah, and that's okay. And it's and because it's not a mandatory and that, yeah. And at the time, of course, I mean, not that the commentators ever know the difference, but they didn't think it was a, they thought it was a, a five minute. And that's completely clear. Yes, we have success. Ha, how you like that? taken a little longer than I had thought. Here's the last slide. Oh, I just noticed that left layoff sneaking in a bit early there. It's a lot of Dan today. I don't care if the ball crossed the line. That's not interesting. But what we're looking at is this slide. So everything we just talked about, bring it to this pole. And what are the options here? It's, do you keep it as a goal? Do you blow a free hit defense? Do you have a free hit defense and a green card or free hit defense and a yellow card? And I'll accept a five or 10, it doesn't matter. A lot to unpack on this one. Got the pole up. Let's see how we're doing. I'm sure it's on the way. A lot to unpack. So we have again a sliding attacker. We have contact being made with an opposing player. And that contact is made after that goalkeeper makes a save. And the question before you is, what would you do in this situation? Is there a separation between the team penalty, if any, or the team award and the personal penalty that might exist? Mike has noticed that there is some extra contact, perhaps. The goalkeeper is very much alive to the contact there. Raju wants a free hit out or a free hit to the defense. Nick says play on. The attacker is stationary before the contact. The keeper steps into him. Andrew, the goalkeeper, had already gone to ground before the slide comes in. So for him, that doesn't, the, the slide does not bring the player to ground. So, all right, I understand where you're going with that, Andrew. Good. Steven, you find it hard to say the sliding tackle isn't deliberate, though the keeper gives the attacker a good knee in the head. And we've, we've gone through this a few times, and this is no shade. 
because this is a really intellectually interesting play to parse out. And when you are that umpire in the video booth in this case, you are now in a situation where you're trying to be verbally acute in explaining what's happening. And if you haven't figured out over, I'm almost 110 episodes into these particular kind of live streams where I do solo escapades and discussions with you lot. If you haven't figured out by now that trying to explain these situations clearly, concisely, with a minimum amount, minimum amount of language, if you don't know that that's hard by this point, trust, let me tell you right now, this is difficult and I'm still working really hard to try to improve how I do this and still making tons of mistakes. So Gareth saying that it wasn't deliberate, I think is just a slip of the tongue because what he's trying to do is distinguish between what he feels is a cardable offense in his opinion and what isn't. And he's hinging that on the word deliberate. But unfortunately, but he doesn't have to do that. For me, the action is entirely deliberate. It's entirely intentional that he's gone down in that slide. But the question is whether it's actually dangerous. Does it bring the player to, to does it bring the goalkeeper to ground? Does it even disadvantage the goalkeeper in this situation is the last question that I would put to you. Okay. For Purdy, it's a free hit defense. Attacker appears to start and stop the slide after the save. Doesn't seem to be any danger. The goalkeeper must be allowed to turn towards the rebound, even if the attacker is obstructing. Okay. Uh, McDowell, you think the slide is fine. And then there's a bit of a tete-a-tete -tete between them. Not sure how disadvantaged the goalkeeper is after that, but he does trip accidentally over the player on the ground. And yeah, and that's, and, and so we're, we're starting to get into the meat of this here. And I think maybe we can cordon off the section, would we apply a personal penalty in this situation? Is this, is this a mandatory 10 minute yellow card, for example? Like let's, let's just deal with this right now. Was it a sliding tackle against a player in possession of the ball that makes contact and brings that ball carry to ground? No. So it's definitely not a mandatory yellow card in my view. For another kind of penalty for danger. Was the, the attacker in full control of their body and decided to make that slide? Yes. Did they cause danger by doing so? Some of you might be thinking, well, the goalkeeper's got lots of equipment and all that kind of stuff. Just because they might need a little extra oomph in order to get bruised doesn't mean that this isn't potentially a dangerous situation and we would still apply the same standard. But if we see this degree of contact, would we, would we feel that that's still dangerous enough to require a personal penalty? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. When I put it to myself in terms of, oh, it's a, um, if that were a defender and they'd made that much contact, would I feel that that's something that's card worthy? I might, I might, because there is contact. It's not bring the ground contact, but it is a contact. Is it, is it potentially dangerous? Could it, just cause it doesn't break somebody's legs. Doesn't it, does that mean that we can't penalize somebody for being at risk of breaking somebody's legs? Or does that mean that the attacker exercise enough control to not go in at full pelt and take that risk. I don't know. Watching it a few more times, if you're not calling a foul by the goalkeeper, then it's a non deliberate obstruction after the slide and it's a free hit defense. Cause you feel there's enough disadvantage of the goalkeeper there in the next playing action. The slide is deliberate. Yes. Taco. Good. 
and late, yes, as well as as well as the response, as well is the response of the goalkeeper, but the goalkeeper was not disadvantaged. So a play on for you. I understand, Taco. You would argue a free defense without a card as the slide was not dangerous, but there was an obstruction resulting from it. And I guess what I'm interested in is for those of you in the crowd who are goalkeepers, do you have moments of which that there are there is body contact between you and other players? And are those are are you finding in the you know in those moments if that if that contact happens because you're in place and you're and you're making a save or you've moved into a space where you're best able to make that save and then there's body contact the contact is gone you're set and ready for the shot do you feel then that that contact disadvantaged you from the next action I know I kind of begged the question there in that statement, but I'm kind of wondering. Um, <laughs> Purdy, you're obviously a goalkeeper and you know that you have less, fewer injuries than your teammates and that's sort of fair. Steven, your goal, goalkeepers were all that. Yeah, you're big softies. You're absolutely right. For Jamal, uh, the player made contact after the save. The slide of the goalkeeper does not affect the save, but with the wet pitch on purpose, this is a play that comes from the surface. Yeah. Oh, of course, nobody does it on sand turf. <laughs> no personal penalty acquired. It may be just a verbal warning. Yeah, in, in other situations, yeah, very much. And you're watching it even more, my, McDowell. So now you know what my problem is because I, I watch the clip and live and then I go back and I actually create the clip in Final Cut Pro and then I bring it in here and then I watch it a few more times and then I watch it with you lot and by then I've watched it 40 times and... I have to keep going back to my principles. The more I watch it, you say, you're looking at the pad into the attacker being partly pretty deliberate. He's made the save with a stretch and then suddenly he knees his back. Uh, the knee is back over his ankle. The knee is back over his ankle. The knee is back over the ankle. What does that mean? <laughs> they do that on your sand pitch when it's wet. It's on its last legs and you can slide for a mile, says Denman. Okay, let's, uh, let's end the poll and see if I can wrap this up in a two minute warning. I have no faith that I'm gonna be able to do this, but let's find out. Here's your two minute warning. And what do we say? So 43% of you agreed that it's a free hit to the, to the defense. Okay, and then a bunch and twenty percent of you wanted the card as well, and then for a bunch of you, you wanted a goal, and that was thirty percent of you, thirty-one percent. So that, I mean, there's a lot of okay. That's seventy-three percent of you think it shouldn't have been a goal, and thirty percent of you think it should be a goal. I actually feel that the, the goalkeeper is not disadvantaged in making the save at all. He has lots of time to get back up. He's set. He's where he needs to be. And for the times of other levels of contact at this level of play with goalkeepers, I do not see this call being made at all. So for me, if we don't feel that that slide is dangerous enough, that it wouldn't even warrant a card, then I'm I'm kind of wondering, well, what, you know, how much disadvantage is there truly there then? I don't think there's an obstruction. He's got plenty of time to get back up. So for me, I think that's what I'm going with. Okay. We're going to have tough situations like this to sort of puzzle through and parse through. And I think it's worthwhile to go through the steps in order to sort out all these things. When we don't have a video umpire, we're gonna have to go to our colleague and say, okay, you need to help me step through this. Was, tell me about the slide and was the goalkeeper disadvantaged? And then you're on your own about whether the ball crossed the line or not, obviously, because your colleague can't help you with that. So there you go, kind of.
Uh, you think the initial reaction of the keeper is just following the ball. He needs something. He finds something obstructing him, so he gives it a bit extra. Yeah, I mean, it's there's nothing super malicious in it. He's just kind of like, hmm. I'd clear them out too. Um, Steven, by bringing his foot back underneath him, not moving his ball towards the foot that stretched out. Okay. I think I, I see what's happening there. Or Denman. Oh, that was, yeah, to Denman. Okay. Having listened to you, I agree. The goalkeeper is clearly set and unobstructed by the second shot. Thanks, Purdy. That means a lot to me. We're, we're just getting to know each other here. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad that that, that had a, had a bearing. It's, it's difficult because I really, what I would like to see is that the sliding attacker for doing something that wasn't super dangerous, but was dangerous enough, but that didn't disadvantage, I would still like to see a card, but the goal is given. At this level, that's a shit show. Like, it just nobody will understand it and nobody will like it. And actually at every level, nobody would like it or understand it. It would be such a hard sell, such a hard sell, but to me, there's a separation between the personal penalty p potential and the, the team award. And if this had happened somewhere else on the pitch, this had happened outside the circle and a player went for a slide for some weird reason and made that degree of contact, but it wasn't worthy of a team penalty because the ball wasn't even there, you would want to do something about it because you still want the players to conduct themselves in a safe manner. It's a tough one. We're going to do lunges in the Discord party to work it out. Okay. You go, you guys, you nerd it out like the delightful nerds that you are. My favorite. Thank you very much for that. That was that was an interesting conversation. I liked that. Uh, let's get into topic two because after all, it's one o'clock and I've got lots of time. What? Deliberately playing the ball with the body. We're going to have to go a little faster. You voted goal, Steve, on the last one. I appreciate that about you. Firm. Okay, so this happened a little early in the tournament, but I wanted to bring this out because there's a little bit of, it actually kind of almost has, has hints of sliding and diving. It's a nice little tangent, or not, sag. It's a nice sag from one to the other. And I don't even think, yeah, I don't even think we really need to take a poll here. Is anybody surprised to see a yellow card come out for this particular play? And if you are, why? And let's just talk about it. I just, I don't want to assume what looks very obvious to me is obvious to everybody else. So feel free. Um, you disagree on the obstruction. He trips over the player. But he's not on the floor when the ball comes in. He's standing up. Okay, we're going to have to fight about this later. With Del. Okay, so... What we're seeing here is a, a New Zealand defender attempting to intercept the ball, and he doesn't corral that first attempt. So there he goes. He gets a stick on the ball, and he's trying to do everything he can to make sure that he that that ball doesn't come through now when you watch it in slow motion again it makes everything look a little different but he is in control of his action here in diving and stretching out when you go to ground you are at risk that you are going to end up playing the ball with your body and that's exactly what happens this alistair is a breakdown foul this breaks down the play because he's doing everything he can to make sure that the attackers don't regain that firm possession of the ball and be able to turn and go into the top of the New Zealand circle in the center. So uh, Mike Mack, he's recklessly putting his ball, body in a position to stop the ball. If he misses with the ball with a stick, it hits his body. So it's definitely a yellow. Yeah, player knew it was yellow without even looking. I mean, he was a little bit, I wouldn't say he was confused. But he was dismayed. He was like, oh, dang. 
Dangerous play on black, definitely a yellow. A yellow is a bit harsh. No, it's not dangerous. It's not dangerous. Not really. Who's he endangering? Well, himself. Yeah. But he is deliberately going to ground in order to make sure the ball and being reckless as to whether his body is going to stop the ball from going through. So, Al, I think it is, top of the circle, that is an intentional foul. Given the time of the game, quarter four, six minutes left, and it's a 3-3 game. This is a big call, and Herman gives the penalty corner as well. For me, there's just no question. No question at all. Deliberate attempt to prevent possession for Rachel. And Graham, the intent is to break that down legally or not. High risk, high reward. Yep. And, and this is why I keep talking, Graham, about the difference between using intentional in the sense that we understand it as native, native English speakers and reckless as to the result. And Stephen Hunter, yeah, you're not still here, but this, this was also something that we talked about in the server with, with Stephen, which was that we have to separate those two things out because somebody is going to say, well, I didn't mean to give up a penalty corner. I didn't mean for that ball to hit my body. That wasn't my intention. My intention was actually to dive and to hit it out of the air and save the day. That was my intention. But you were in full control of your action, which was to stretch out, go to ground, block the space with your body. So the risk was if you didn't have control of the ball, if you didn't play it away, it was highly likely it was going to hit your body. And that is a good thing for you because if it was only a free hit, well, that gives all your teammates a chance to get back and reset their structure, blah, 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 blah. That is what breakdown play is. And that is why we have to use these words very intentionally when we talk about it. Uh, yeah. I mean, maybe it could have been a green earlier in the game, but still, it's just, yeah. Taco, you see the New Zealand player dive into the ball, and the England player, ha Indian player has the ball backwards and therefore lands on the ball. What if the Indian player was a little later to touch the ball? I, I, I don't know. Like, a lot of different things could have happened here. Um, and what we have to penalize is what happens. So... But given the impact now, you see the breakdown. Excellent, good stuff. Okay, here's the second scenario. This would be the final. Okay, Nick, I'm going back for this. Okay. Nick, this is really important. Okay. And when I'm trying to build consensus, I mean, sometimes I have to nudge people out of what I don't, what I feel is incorrect thinking. So you're saying the body contact isn't inevitable when the player dives. It's a very clever play by the attacker to put the ball back to him, into him. Okay. Just because it's not 100% certainty doesn't mean that it's not still very risky as to the likelihood. We don't expect players who aren't goalkeepers to be going to ground in order to play the ball on a regular basis because they don't have the privileges goalkeepers do nor the protection in order to play the ball with their body. So when they go to ground and they put themselves in what could be a dangerous situation and they're blocking a big long space, damn Skippy the Indian player is full within his right to put the ball back into him. We do not have the manufactured foul in the rule book anymore. And really he's reaching over, the interception has just happened. How much skill do you think the Indian player is expected to deliver in this moment? 
that's a big onus on him that he suddenly has to avoid this player who's decided to go to ground and take up space that he's not entitled to do because he can't use that body. Okay? So, let's flip that around. And let's get back to the other situation. So for Goddard's here, it's a penalty stroke and a card. So let's say, um, Kat, may I say that Jakub did an amazing job at this tournament. You learned a lot from him. Jakub's presentation is bar none, just fantastic. And there's a ton to learn about that. And Goddard's, you were surprised a card was not given as well, considering the impact on the play. I think, I'm just going to guess, I'm not certain, wasn't there, audio wasn't turned on, thinking that that's probably the conversation that Matt Scrambush was having with Yaku in that moment, is, all right, and like, Matt's is not famous for being a very composed player, just on the DL, just between us. So, I think he was doing a very good job in keeping what he was trying to say at the right level and having the right conversation with Yaku. But I'm pretty sure he was saying, so if that's a stroke, because he's intentionally, he's intentionally gone to ground, taking a high risk, very high risk in this case, that he's going to play the ball with his body. And it has a high impact on the play because Velen, their top scorer, their best player is unmarked in front of Vincent Van Ash in a circle. Okay, good, thanks. <laughs> and Jakub did have a fantastic tournament, yes. So I can see the argument that Graham Bush was making there. What was interesting about this is that you don't often have the chance to go to one or two calls. And Jakub's initial decision was for a penalty corner. Because if the player, if Venier had managed to use a stick and in that fashion had played the ball off the end line, he was going to call that as intentionally playing the ball off the end line, which is absolutely valid. But he also has a sneaking suspicion that although he can't see 100% from his angle as to whether the player has used their body instead, he, he stops time. And I mean, he could have taken a self-referral, but he just asked Steve. And he's like, hey, Captain America, yo, get on the comms. Did he play the ball with his body? And he knew exactly what he was going to do after that and went to the penalty stroke. I don't care what that is. You're wondering, Purdy, PS and a card, wondering about my thoughts on the first German player who went in for the tackle. It's a bit of a body contact with a bit of a body check with no ball contact. Purdy, I did not look at this. So let me have a look. So if you do mean the one who was who was pressuring the shot taker, um, yeah, I mean, there's he, he does a good job of leaning with minimal amount of body contact. There is always body contact at this level, and it's whether it was disadvantageous or not. I don't think so. He got his he got a shot away the way that he wanted, or his intended pass away the way that he wanted. So, and there was some ball contact you missed. Okay. Um, Luke, in the slow angle, you can see the goalkeeper just shout at his defender. <laughs> I mean, there's goalkeepers in the world who know the rules, and then there's Vincent Van Ash, and he is at another level. He knows exactly what's going on. He's very, very... I've, I have fangirled about him on many occasions. And his video referral at the Euros for the German hand on the stick... 
that he had noticed earlier in the year in Pro League but decided never to appeal it. He was not going to bring it to anybody's attention and let them do it in the semifinal <laughs> so that he could refer a goal that was scored on a penalty corner because the stopper used his hand. He took his hand off his stick and he kind of went, Wee. How How can you not be a complete fan of that of that kind of player i follow him on instagram like i can't help it it's that good so the any penalty stroke he part here is missing that's missing is there's not a certain goal prevented here N not, nor is a foul against the attacker oh taco come here lean in lean in okay actually let's do it this way Penalty stroke is awarded. I'm going to have to change my the color of my pen now just to draw out this. There are two separate things that you look for. You look for either an offense by a defender, which prevents a probable scoring of a goal, or... Or... Oh, this is a lot more dramatic if you can see me drawing at the same time. An intentional offense in the circle by a defender against a player who has possession of the ball or likely possession of the ball. So on last week's video, or maybe a couple weeks ago, someone was asking me about likely possession and and that sort of thing and and he said well if if the player doesn't have the ball on their stick you can't intentionally offend them such to fulfill this requirement in 12.4b and they had forgotten the likely possession of the ball and that is one hell of a likelihood in this particular case okay Oh, that's okay. High risk, high impact, definitely penalty stroke and card depending on context. I, I don't want to get into really why I think like all the reasons that go into not a card in this particular situation in the final of the Men's World Cup. But what I want you to think about is the impact here the impact on the play. And whether a penalty stroke is enough in your game. I think there's going to be many situations where you come to a different conclusion and you're going to be awarding a five minute yellow card there. That's all I can say. Yes, Quentin, you remember best referral ever. I'm sure that's what a remontada is. Is that what a remontada? Yes, best referral ever. Thanks for backing me up there. And hi there, Quentin. Are you are you new? Are you? You get the DJ air horn. Okay. Okay. It looks like we weren't running a poll, so cool. I'll just move to the next one. It's all good. Excellent. So that sets you, bitch. Okay. Whew. Yeah, we'll be able to speed through this one. This is <laughs> goalkeepers moving their feet early on a penalty stroke. Semi final. Up against Kim and Black. I would like a poll on this one. Just because I want you to exercise your decision-making powers here. So Taco, I see what you're saying here. This is no longer, as of about the last sort of four years, something that we should be focused on when we're making these calls. We have been instructed and briefed and pounded into our little umpiring heads over and over again that we are not supposed to be applying 
a scorability criterion into whether we awarding intentional fouls or not. We are simply to award them. And if we award them, then we can also award personal penalties. If we award a personal penalty for an intentional foul, we must give the team penalty upgrade. Okay. And I guess I'm really pounding into your head because this is every, every show. I think I make mention of this. It's been 108 shows. It's a lot of shows. Just think. Is there a link to that referral? Yes, there is, Queen, and I will find it for you, and I will put it in the description, and there will be a little thing on the YouTube, like a little card that flashes up going, hey, because, boy, did I make a big deal out of this when it happened. Is this topic going to stress you as a goalkeeper? Maybe. Okay, you better vote quick because I don't want to belabor this at all. So hopefully you've all voted. I'm about to end the poll and I know there's a lag. It's about 20 seconds between when I talk and when you guys hear it. Am I gonna wait 20 seconds? Yes, I'm gonna delay this because you better have your vote in and all that kind of thing. I do believe in the replay that I break it down very much for you on this replay here. Hasn't played the ball, hasn't played the ball, hasn't played the ball, hasn't played the ball. The right foot moves, hasn't played the ball. The left foot almost, now it's moved, now he plays the ball. Let's end the poll. Two minute warning. And we have a, oh, I gotta change the color back. This is why I had a chalkboard set up, you guys. Sixty percent retake, and thirty-one percent of you wanted a. We're saying play on. Okay. Um, and that's fair. And 5% of you wanted a retake in a card as well. And so just to quickly go through the rules on this situation, and actually I've got it right here, I think. Okay. So for a defense during the taking of a penalty stroke, if the player defending the stroke prevents a goal from being scored, but moves either foot before the ball has been played, the player can be cautioned and for any subsequent offense must be suspended. Okay, so you have the option. If a goal has been prevented by an early foot movement, you could warn them. You also could card them right away, but if they do it a second time, you must card them. In this situation, in the semifinal of the Men's World Cup, I would have expected just a retake and a warning even though they have a second goalkeeper because it's just sort of big. And we're looking at this language here about um, moving either foot before the ball has been played. I don't think there's a lot of, a lot of room for us there to go any other way. Okay. Difficult to see in the moment. What was interesting to me is that um, they had their referral. Belgium had their referral and didn't take it. And they're just like, oh, okay. They won anyway. They went on to go to the final, but I thought, whoa. There you go. Here's another one. So you can see that, that Jakub is not afraid to lay down the wall with Van Asch anyway. That was kind of an interesting little... What? And he puts his hand in his pocket. So Tom Grambush considers it. Did he move his feet? 
He turns back to Yakub and sort of does a motion like feet. He had his referral. Could have taken it. But even then, they're not sure. Okay. Hasn't played the ball. Right there is when he plays the ball. Same, same, same pole. If you want to do it. And this is for the last one. So I'll just go through your comments on the last ones and you can watch the, sec the next one. But for all of you watching the replay, all of these comments are for the last play, okay? I hope I answered that question. Al, you know, you, you, you pop into to a What Up Wednesday, you gotta bring the goods. You got to bring the goods. Get out your rule book and have a look. And I think this might be sports ball, but I don't know. And I don't care because this is a show about hockey. And this is the last one moved and saved. Goalkeeper has gone early. Purdy, it's a retake. Uh, goalkeeper moved early for Luke. Okay. And you say play on, <laughs> David. Uh, oh, and what is going on here? Is that going to show up? It is. You don't have to stand still. Al, look at the words. Al, look at the words. You don't have to be still. You just can't move your feet. So a goalkeeper who bounces up and down without moving their feet, cool. Goalkeeper who smacks his posts and does all that thing that goalkeepers I think is really cool to do, that's fine as long as they don't move their feet. You can't move your feet. Just don't move your feet. He could do like the, the, the Macarena as long as he doesn't move his feet. And because he's, as he's moved both, could you go with a straight card? You could, I don't know. The fact that he saved it and with such an early movement, I don't know. Like I wouldn't have been surprised not to see a card. I also would not have been surprised if we did. Uh, sorry, did I? Whatever. Either way, I would not have been surprised. What I was surprised at is that it wasn't a retake. I am the worst at seeing these. Like there's a lot of stuff that I think, ah, I'm a pretty good on pirate. I'm really bad at seeing goalkeeper movement. I just kind of think, yeah, they're cool. Let them do what they do. <laughs> I'm laissez-faire, as it were, about goalkeepers. But this I saw in real time and went, or that I saw in real time. Okay, so let's see what's happening with this one here. Uh, no, that's not it. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure which one was it, but... Who, who your man is, Jamal, but I'm sure you have many, many spirit animals here. Pretty technically, okay, so we're probably talking about this one now. If I'm wrong, correct me, please. And I apologize. Sometimes the delay just makes it really difficult for me to make sure the comments stay with the right clip and I can still move along at a reasonable pace. Um, technically, his feet move before he gets the ball. You think Keely will get angry if you tried to make it? No, no, not at all. The second one is less clear, uh, says Goddard's but looks like an early move retake. I think that this is this is one that you wouldn't necessarily see. I think we the foot moves slightly, but there's more movement of his knees bending and his hips and, and, and things like that that maybe feel more like a movement. Also, I mean, he kind of moves that left foot. It's the left foot that really moves a little bit more. It's fractional, you think the Cooper's, yeah. So Luke, I saw the same thing. Same as the last one. And you would give the caution. The caution, but not the card, right? Okay. <laughs> Mike, disconnect your buzzer. You're, I knew it. Can you move after the shot is made? I sure hope so. Otherwise you're never gonna make a save unless they shoot it straight at you. Everyone just remember David's my friend, no piling on. 
No piling on. He shows up just because he likes to give me moral support. And for some reason, learn about hockey umpiring, even though he's never watched a game of hockey in his life. I think it's awesome. Okay. So I wanted to address those just because I know they were on social media and I just want you to be able to internalize. Think about how am I going to prepare myself if I'm in that situation? How do I approach one of the biggest decisions, especially if a goalkeeper makes a save, one of the biggest decisions, a semifinal, a final in whatever the top competition that you get to umpire in and all that pressure's on you. How do you prepare yourself? What are you going to watch for? Do you grease the wheels in your brain? If I see the goalkeeper move early, this is what I'm going to do. If the goalkeeper makes the save, this is what I'm going to do. If the ball goes in the net and the goalkeeper moves early, what am I going to do? Play advantage, call the goal. But you want to go through that in your mind so that you're ready for those decisions. If you're the supporting umpire on that penalty stroke, what are you doing in your mind? Does the ball cross the goal? Does the ball cross the goal? Does the ball cross the goal? Does the skirt make me look good? Does the ball cross the goal? Does, you know, it, you, you've, you've really got to narrow down your thinking and grease your wheels. What am I looking for? What does it look like if the goalie goalkeeper makes a save? Can I move around? If the ball gets caught in their equipment, what if the ball gets caught in their equipment? What's the decision? Work through these things before it happens so that you can make the best decision for you in that moment. Thank you very much. And Nick, that's why I, I think you're absolutely right. And, and Nick's just pointing out that if you watch, you know, if you watch 100% of penalty stroke attempts, you're probably going to see on 80% of them, the goalkeeper moving their feet a little bit. And so you're looking for something that's clear. And I think what really stood out, and I mean, I was watching Van Ash on that one just because of what had happened with Block in the, in the game before in the semifinals. And I was really like, because my wheels were greased, right? Mm. And I thought, you know what, in real time, no. And we watched the video and it makes it so much more clear and it's slow motion and I did stop it. I freeze framed it right at the moment the ball's being played. So for me, I, I don't think in real time that you would call that as a retake. In the first one, yes. Um, yeah, I wasn't sure, uh, Goddard's I've watched it a few times. I, I don't know if he actually did deflect it onto the post or if it was just going to the post. It's from the angle that we have from the camera, because they don't give us that. If they'd given us the same angle we had on the block save, we would have known if there was a touch because the angle of the ball would have clearly changed, but they didn't give it to us, which is an interesting directorial decision. Hey, production team. Why did you do that? Okay. Put keepers in starting blocks. <laughs> and, oof, can you imagine false starts? That'd be so, we have reached the Kelly out. Oops, sorry. Okay. Um, so the last thing I'm going to talk about, I'm probably not gonna be able to wrap this thing up in terms of wrapping up the Hockey World Cup. So let me just go through this one because it did get raised on the server. And I want to make sure that we are very clear because maybe you missed this. Maybe you weren't around in November when we covered this topic about throwing a face mask. Do you want to fizzy one? Let me deal with him first and then, and then we'll take a referral. <laughs> right, they've called a referral, which they're allowed to do. Yeah, which they're it's in the circle. It's deemed referral? Yeah. So if you can hear, Bruce is handling this so well. Referrals called by South Africa for a foul in the circle. If you can check the situation, please. And he explains to Harman Preet that, look, I'm going to tend to the injury first, but they've called a referral, so just hold on. He tends to the South African player and make sure that he's okay. 
this is a, you know, this is a head injury slash could be blood, could be serious face injury. I have a decision for you. Uh, defender number I don't know where you were, Katarina. Uh, send the gear off without careless. Therefore, you can award a penalty corner. And I recommend a personal penalty for number 30. So that was Amit Rohidas. Perfect. Who was throwing his gear Perfect. out of the playing area? Okay. But he was careless. And reason Throw being, he'll be getting that five card. Minutes. Five minutes suspension five minute for Ahmed Rohidas. Take a five minute yellow card. You get a five minute yellow card. Okay. So that was the situation. This is the rule that we're looking at. And McDowell, we talked about this in the server. And what I should have done was to make you go and look up. 916 in the moment but I didn't because we were talking about whether it disadvantages the player in the moment such that you know it, it, is it is it needing of a team penalty or should it just be a card so 916 is one of those rules that we forget about especially because we've forgotten about that word which we'll get to in a moment but players must not throw their masks Okay, onto the field, at the ball, or at another player, umpire, or person. It's almost like umpires aren't people. Ha, how you like that? But the remedies are prescribed. A free hit should be awarded if this occurs outside the circle, and a penalty corner awarded if it happens inside the circle. This rule that has been sitting in front of our faces for years that we haven't had to look at has come into play yet again. Oh my goodness, because this was the one. Oh, this is loud. I don't know why that was so loud. So this was no, I, I, we dealt with this in November, I think of last year. This is a pro league match, Catalina, and I will link to this in the description and in a card above so you can go watch that discussion. But after this incident occurred, no, pe no personal penalty was given and no team penalty was given because everybody forgot. But you know who was here? at this tournament, at this particular pro league event, Fede. You know who the video umpire was in that particular situation? Fede. <laughs> After this happened, the FIH rules committee the next day sent over a briefing saying, hey, by the way, 916, and also we are asking umpires to please award a five minute yellow card in any situation where an umpire gets struck. And if you're going to award a five minute yellow card when umpires get struck, then you absolutely know. And here's Bruce. Okay. I mean, yeah, <laughs> Bruce was obviously there in both situations too. So he got in both situations. So Bruce was the reserve umpire and he came onto the pitch there. So he can't do anything about the decision that was made beforehand. He's not allowed to, but a penalty corner had already been awarded for something else anyway, but there you go. Oh, you know, audio be hard. There you go. That guidance is for if the ball hits the equipment, though. Oh, damn it, McDowell. No, this is the one I want. Hmm. So that's why it didn't apply. He's right. Hmm. I'm gonna have to puzzle upon this more because in the situation that we were looking at, in this situation that we're, not that situation, this situation that we were looking at, the ball was in play. And I, I did leave the poll option. I, if we had had time for a poll, we would have done it where, it is, okay, is it a, um, 
the ball, the, the play is stopped about here because Bruce realizes there's a head slash facial injury on the pitch and time just has to be stopped um, immediately. That's the guidance that we have in the briefing and in every good rules clinic that you ever had will tell you that. So the play could have been restarted with a bully. It was in India's possession and it could have been one of those uncontested bullies. South Africa plays it off the end line. India regains possession at the 15 meter, blah, blah, blah. So in this situation, Fede recommended that the play restarts with penalty corner and a personal penalty didn't, he didn't prescribe it. He didn't say you have to give a yellow minute, five minute yellow. He left that up to Bruce. So that'll be very interesting. Yep. So, Taco, you two are both right in catching me on that. Uh, you assume it was given for reckless play and danger to the South Africa player. Yes, but the question is, just like I was talking about, and this, this theme again of the goalkeeper being disadvantaged by the sliding attacker, something can be dangerous and need addressing with a personal penalty, but not require redressing with a team penalty because the balance... The scales of justice have not been disrupted in vis-a-vis -vis the two teams against each other and what they're doing in the contest. Okay, so that's why this is important. So what I'll do, everybody, is I will go back and check with people that I know. So whether that briefing also prescribed that if somebody throws their mask and hits somebody inside the circle, regardless of where the ball is, that that needs to be considered a penalty card, a, a, a penalty corner, sorry, as well as the personal penalty that's prescribed. That very well may have been the briefing. And it's kind of hard to, to argue against that in a lot of ways, but it does throw a little bit of a wrench into our normal considerations of what should be considered a team penalty or not. So your little thought out comment discord, ignore the intentional offense on a player, not present to the ball in the circle or your ill thought out. Yeah, but it still has to be disadvantageous. Even if the player doesn't have possession of the ball, there still has to be disadvantage in order for a team penalty to be needed, right? I don't love this. Yes, they can. Yes, they can, David. Excellent. You're glad this came up. I'm not, because my brain is Because I, I thought I had found something and then I'm like, oh, you know what? I didn't read it carefully enough, did I? No, I didn't. I was preparing for a show and I was rushing and I didn't read carefully. Here's the good news. I can correct myself. Okay, before we go, I just want to mention a couple of things that I should and I shall. Uh, we're not going to have to, we're not going to do the wrap up because that's going to take me a long time. You're just going to have to come into the after show in the discord, in the local, and we can talk about that as a group then but first of all i would like to thank this fine human being where's my uh, nicola brown from australia has joined the ranks of fhu 3t green thank you very much nicola for your support and i hope you enjoy access to the clip library because that is something that you get if you want to read more about this and why I have card colors for my members. It's, it's a branding thing. Go to fhumpires.com forward slash FHU3T and you can learn more about this fine group of humans who also joined by this otherwise excellent and sim I mean similarly excellent human being words, William. I think I thought I had talked about him, but I guess I didn't. So I am going to congratulate him again. I, I don't care. I could do this every week, William. You, you could be my yellow member of the week every week. Gave me a fine 
really, really nice unsolicited testimonial. He DM'd me the other day and he said, you know what? I wanted to just, I wanted to say something nice. So here, use this as a testimonial. And I'm like, okay. And then I just sprayed it all over social media. I do have a bunch of those. If you want to help out with a testimonial, if you're appreciative of something that we've been able to do together as a community or something I've been able to provide for you, I think if you go to fhumpires.com forward slash testimonial, you'll go to a page where you can enter something. I really should have double checked that. Give it a try. Who knows? You're warming up for your lunges. We're not doing lunges. Oh, yes. Okay. He's off home on Friday. That's the update on Ben, which is great news. So glad that he's doing well. We were chatting on Monday slash Tuesday for him. And he was talking about just how well Hockey India has been taking care of him. And it just, and that's just really nice to hear because... If you can imagine being still st stuck behind in the host country, all of your friends are flying home, you've suffered this injury, you've had a surgery, you don't know, you like the doctors haven't told you when they think you might be able to be released, when you might be able to go home, what it's gonna feel like to get on a plane with all of that going on. And I was just like, Ben, oh my gosh, my thoughts are you know with you with, you know, thinking about how that's, that's going to feel. That's the first thing I thought about when he got in. I thought, oh man, the flight home is going to be terrible. <laughs> uh, priorities. But uh, anyway, really glad to hear that he's uh, going to be going home on Friday. So there you go. Um, stop it. Look, I have a quota. You've exceeded your quota of saying nice things to me. And then I just have to tell you to stop because I get really freaked out. Did he steal Marson's mustache? I don't know. Testimonial doesn't work. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Do you want me to hold on and find the link? No, I'll put it in the description. I'll put it in the discord server. I'll put stuff, but let me tell you, there's an awful lot of tweets from Goddard's there. <laughs> Cause he keeps saying nice things on Twitter. And so I'm like, I'll add that to my little testimonial wall. Could be the wall of love. There you go. And he's looking forward to eating bread. Ben is looking forward to eating bread rather than rice or corn cakes. That is excellent. Okay. And then the last thing I wanted to toss some flowers out in the direction of these fine humans as well. Very proud to have seen that and out of focus. I'm very proud to have seen that Celine and Magali, I I'm probably pronouncing it so wrong, but Magali sounds fun. Magali Sajon de Belgique they were appointed to the men's Belgian indoor finals, as you can see from the graphic there. And I just think that's awesome. And I mean, like the men's final, okay? Also making some history was Rachel Williams, who umpired uh, in the super sixes and did a men's finals match as well. And Rachel was, I think she had her first international men's match in the pro league in Argentina, uh, just a couple of, a month or two ago, several weeks ago, and did a fantastic job. I was really, really impressed. So uh, really glad to hear that she got an opportunity at the men's super sixes. But again, it's, it's about if great umpires should be doing great games. End of story. And let's keep on pushing to make this the normal thing. It was parfait. It was perfect. Yes. My little French, my, my uh, French lessons from high school are coming back to help me. I'm glad it was insightful. That's really great. And there you go. Thank you so much for all of your participation. Thanks for catching my mistakes as always. Uh, thank you for being here, being here for each other and being supportive because that is what we really are all about. Making sure that we are improving as a community and sharing our understandings and doing that in a way that keeps everybody excited, engaged, having fun and ready to umpire the next week. So thanks for being here and we'll see you in the Discord server. All right. Bye now.